Lord willing, July after July. Forward, I know as the, as the day approaches, uh, he's looking more and more forward to it. And so, I don't know how nervous he is about that day, but uh, I'm excited for what the Lord is doing and to be just to be a witness. I'm just glad to know, Brother Jirai. So, let's welcome him as he comes to take his liberty to preach to us the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Glad to be here tonight. Um, we're going to go straight into the scripture. Uh, the scripture. Um, we'll be coming from uh, Joshua chapter seven. Joshua chapter seven, and we'll be reading uh, verse eight through eleven. Joshua chapter 7, verse 8 through 11. If you found it, say amen. If you're still looking, just say please wait. I'll be patient. Amen. And it reads in John chapter, I mean Joshua chapter 7, verse 8 through 11. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us round and cut off our name from the earth and what will thou do unto thy great name and the lord said unto joshua get thee up wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face israel hath sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant which i commanded them for they have even taken of the accursed thing and have also stolen and dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff and for a title today, I would just simply um, call it Getting Rid of the Hindrance. Um, Pastor, could you please pray? All right, let's bow our heads as we go before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we thank you for what we already feel in this place. We thank you for your very presence that's in this place, Lord. We know your word is already anointed. Lord, I ask that you anoint Brother Gerard now from the crown of his head, Lord, to the very sole of his feet, Lord, that as he speak, he do so as an oracle of thine, Lord, that every word that he speak, Lord Jesus, cause life in us, O oh God, to cause your word, Lord, to be manifested in us, O oh God, to make us wiser into salvation, Lord. Have your way, O oh God, even now we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Hallelujah. Getting rid of the hindrance. Um, we see in this particular story, Joshua and the people of Israel had already defeated Jericho. They had just got done um, having the victory over Jericho. Um, of course, we know that story when they walked around the walls of Jericho, shouted down those walls, and took complete dominion of Jericho. And they were now in the process of having dominion of AI. They had been called to take over AI, to now take over uh, another piece of land in which is a representation of what um, Brother Kerry had uh, spoke of last week of another level of di a new dimension of dominion and authority. And I truly believe that he was in the Holy Ghost when he said that. Um, in the passage, we see that Joshua is crying out to the Lord. Um, he, he, if you know about the story, Joshua was crying out to the Lord. Uh, things begin to go wrong in this process. He sent out those those uh, those men to go look at that land, to go look at AI, and the next thing you know, it they're getting chased back to where they came from. Um, and in the process, we've seen there were some mistakes that happened. There were some things that happened that wasn't supposed to happen that God didn't speak of when He spoke to Joshua, um, even though God. Um, even though God had promised them victory, there was a glitch in the system. And we noticed that that glitch wasn't because the word of God was not all the way correct or they missed it. But it was because of a simple mistake that one person made in that tribe. So we see um, here that there is... A, uh, a price to pay for the mistakes that we make and also um, we have to be able to get rid of these hindrances that can keep us from being able to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, to have the promise of God so if I were to propose today um, whether we cooperate or not God will get the job done by all means necessary um, in my first 
Uh, firstly, uh, we'll go to uh, Joshua chapter 7, verse 1. And it said, But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. So, ain't that something? One man. It's just because of one man, uh, things begin to go wrong. There's always that one that spoils everything. Um, it's always that one. It could be the whole group. I remember I played football. We had the perfect play. And when that one person messed up, it, 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 everything went wrong. I mean, next you know, they run in a 90-yard touchdown, and I'm pretty upset, and the coach is upset. I'm getting yelled at for somebody else's doing. So we see that that one thing is what caused the Lord to be angry with them, and things begin to turn around. Achan had taken the accursed thing in which God forbade them not to touch. Um, this caused the Lord to be not just mad with Achan, but with the children of Israel as a whole. So we've seen it didn't just affect Achan, it affected the children of Israel as a whole. It affected the whole body, as you can say. Uh, this one simple and very small mistake had caused a very severe punishment. Um, when they went to go spy that land, and they went over into Ai, and they got closer to Ai, and the, the, uh, the Amalekites, they began to see them coming. Uh, the next thing you know, it, they began to chase them out of their land. And the next thing you know, it, 36 men were killed. Um, so we see that men, innocent lives were lost in the midst of this just because of one mistake. So we must understand that God is taking us into another level of dominion. Um, like I said, um, I really believe that Kerry was in the Holy Ghost when he said that in authority. And we must not take part in things that God has forbidden. We must remember that um, whatever decisions we make, we will not only it will not only affect our individual promise, but it could slow down the forward movement of the body of Christ. If you truly love the body of Christ, you truly care about the will of God being completed here in this city, here in this town and country area. We must always be mindful of the things that we get ourselves into. We must be mindful also of the things that we are doing in our daily lives, walking, uh, watching our daily walk always asking God to put that mirror in the front of us so that way we can always be able to observe and examine our own lives. Also understand that God's promise is a promise and that he will do whatever it takes for his promise to come to pass. So it's always remember that God's word is yea and amen. So if it's yea and amen, it's coming to pass regardless of what happens in the midst. And we'll see that um, in my second point. Secondly, Notice what God said in Joshua chapter 7, verse 11 through 13. said, Israel have, have sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. And then 13, um, up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. And then verse 14, in the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by household, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man, and it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because of and because he hath wrought fully in Israel what a severe punishment God didn't just single out one person but he said the whole camp was accursed because of the one man's doing um, God told Joshua the man of God that he would no longer be with him unless he destroyed the thing that became a curse so 
understand this part and really pay attention to this part. Anything that God says that's a curse and we touch of it, we dwell in it, it now becomes a part of you. So if that be the case, then God will do what he has to do to get the accursed thing out of the midst of his promise. Because what it will do, it will hinder the promise from coming to pass. But God will not allow that because he is God. God didn't tell him, cast the accursed thing somewhere else. Nor did he say, leave it behind. But God said, destroy it, to burn it, to remove it completely. So God will do what it takes in order for his promise to come to pass. Whatever the case may be, whatever the situation may be, maybe it be a promise in your, in your lives, God will do what it takes in order for it to come to pass. Whether it, whether it has to do with removing someone out of your life, whether it has to do with removing some things out of your life, God will do it and you will see it come to pass. So we must realize that when God promises us a new level of dominion, that God will do whatever it takes for it to come to pass. He is God. So if God has to destroy that thing that's affecting forward progression, he will do it. He will remove the hindrance. We must make sure that we stay away from the accursed things lest we become consumed. So we don't want to be we don't want to be a part of the accursed because we know that God will burn it with fire. Finally, we see that once this individual or this accursed person, this issue had been resolved, Joshua, the people of Israel, were able to destroy Ai and its king. So we see there was good news at the end of this. Uh, once it was removed, even though it was such a, a, a tragic way it had to be removed, um, Achan had to end up losing his life, um, we still see that um, the promise still came to pass. And we can go to Joshua chapter 8, verse 1 through 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of, of war with thee, and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given into thine hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and, and, um, and her king as thou didst unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves. Lay thee in an ambush for the city behind it. So we see that it wasn't until after Joshua and the people of Israel had solved this problem, they could defeat Ai. They were able to press forward. We see that God told, he told um, Joshua, he said, now look, he was like, even though, even though it was Achan that made the mistake or, or is sin in the midst of this, my spirit is not with you unless this thing is gone. Now, once they begin to get rid of this thing, get rid of this thing, then we see that they were able to progress. They had the victory. They defeated AI. They demolished AI. It said that they did the same thing they did with um, with Jericho to AI. So we see that God allowed that promise to come to pass. God told them the same thing they had accomplished in Jericho. That something um, um, that something will they do to AI and their king. So they destroy AI. They also had the opportunity of hanging the king. So we see they were able to take complete dominion over Ai. Why am I bringing this up? Because even though in the midst of that tragedy of Achan losing his life because of him just simply being disobedient, God still had the prom uh, made the promise come to pass. We've seen that the people of Israel were still victorious. So what am I saying? I'm saying that even though it might be a hindrance in, in the midst of the situation or it might be a hindrance in the middle of the promise, God will make sure it comes to pass. If he has to remove it completely from off of the face of this earth, he will do it. God will do it. And we have to trust God. We have to trust that God will step in the midst. Even when we think that he's not there, God will step in the midst. If we think that the Lord is going to allow that thing, that hindrance to keep us for a while, God will not allow that to happen. God will remove it because why? It has everything to do with his will, his glory. It has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do for God. So we know that God said that it is for my name's sake. So if he says for my name's sake, he's not going to embarrass himself. God doesn't do things like that. If anything, God is, God is not wanting the people to see you. He's wanting the people to see his glory. So through you, God is going to allow people to see his glory. They're going to see that there's only one true and living God, the true and living God, the God of the apostolics, and his name is Jesus. So we'll see the power of God manifest in the midst of the situation. So what am I saying? Trust God. Trust that God will remove all of your hindrances trust trust God and know and know that your hindrances will not hinder you no longer so finally I want to just leave you with this is just be encouraged 
be encouraged even though it may seem sometimes like like everything is just not flowing the way it's supposed to or sometimes it may seem like things is just moving a little slow well sometimes it has to be like that because like I said before God has to simply show himself up in the midst of the situation and then once we see God show up then that's when we begin to see things begin to move forward things begin to press forward and it press forward quickly we see that Achan had was defeated Achan was destroyed but we've seen that the children of Israel they press they press floor quickly they quickly destroyed those people of Ai and they quickly destroyed that king so God will put you in a position where you'll have dominion you'll have power you'll have authority and guess what God will allow you to see the head of that king the head of that stronghold of that city head hang from that tree so be encouraged in Jesus name Come on, if you receive.